Hey. Hello. Today is Friday, November 11th, 2022. Happy Veterans Day. First things first. I have great news. In case you didn't notice, I uploaded two days ago and I'm uploading again. So we're basically back uh, to the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday thing. It's pretty, pretty great, right? I'm going to be uploading on YouTube every day, by the way, until the YouTube episodes catch up with the podcast platform episodes. And then I'm going to be uploading all new episodes to YouTube a day after they're released on Spotify and Apple. Uh, I don't really... So the Monday Therapy episode uh -huh. that comes out on Spotify and Apple, that episode will be on YouTube the next day, uh -huh. so on and so forth. So yeah, I'm basically going to be uploading almost every day. Yes! Well, Derek, why would I listen to one or the other or or both? Great question, random listener. So on YouTube, I can't use any music that's not my own, but on Spotify and Apple Podcast, I can basically do whatever I want. Um, I can use whatever songs I want, as far as I know, at least for now. I'm the Homelander, mm -hmm. and I can do whatever the fuck I want. The point is, we're going harder than ever. And soon, I'll have an announcement as far as another show I may be featured on soon. So yeah, you might be wondering, where is all of this coming from all of a sudden? Uh, so I recently just achieved marital status. What? Um, that doesn't make any sense. I just became a husband. I acquired a wife. I'm winning at life. And I basically have this new perspective on kind of everything. Like my, my wonderful wife, she works incredibly hard at a job that is very fulfilling. And I just remembered that my purpose in life is not to file mobile insurance claims. So moving forward, I'm spending pretty much every waking moment that I'm not working the day job to only doing what I love doing or things with people I love. I just, it just hit me that I'm kind of too young to be sitting around like not applying myself. I'm too young to not tap in and use all the energy that I have and I want to be exhausted at the end of the day, but I want to be exhausted because I was living every day to the fullest. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyways, um, Joe Rogan, our boy, uh, he loves the gays and he is fighting for them. And that's what I want to talk about today. Joe Rogan has the number one podcast in the world and he invited on a Mr. Matt Walsh. Now, Matt Walsh has his own podcast and radio show. He's a very big conservative. Uh, big, big Christian, big family guy, and he works at The Daily Wire, a company run by uh, our boy Ben, Ben Shapiro. <laughs> what Americans basically want is stability. They want stasis. That's all they want. So he's very big right wing guy, big Republican, big red team, all that. Now, Matt Walsh, he recently released this documentary called What is a Woman? And if you've listened to Derapy before, you know that's something that's been discussed on here before. But uh, Joe Rogan and Matt Walsh, they talk about the documentary and they basically agree that it's, it's a good documentary. It's well presented information. It's a good presentation. And it kind of dunks on some of like trans ideology. And I don't like super agree with all of it. I watched the documentary myself for free. I did not pay the people at Daily Wire. I found like a bunch of different clips of it on YouTube. But that's just the main reason that Matt Walsh was on Joe Rogan's show. Later on in that podcast, because Joe Rogan, his podcast go like two, three hours, unlike mine. Joe Rogan and Matt Walsh, they have a very spirited discussion. You could argue it's kind of a debate about gay marriage. And their 15-minute exchange will be the topic of our podcast today here on Therapy. So, yeah. Sorry for the long intro, and I hope you enjoy the show. Therapy, season three of therapy, season three of <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience. I think of marriage as, is a certain thing, which is the um, the context for uh, for procreation for the for the the building of the the nuclear family. What about people that get married that don't have kids? Are you opposed to that? What if they get married and they decide, you know what, we don't need kids. I'm going to get fixed. You get your tubes tied. Let's travel the world. Well, what do you mean am I opposed to it? I mean, I, I think that uh, that every married couple should be open to life. But what if but... they don't want to? Are you opposed to them being married? If marriage is only for procreation and to bond a family together, 
what about people that are deeply in love that never want to have children? So I think Joe Rogan is doing a great thing by establishing exactly what the conversation is going to be, asking a very direct question. Are you opposed to people that want to get married but don't want to have kids? Is it still a valid marriage, Mr. Walsh? I, I don't think it's, it's not only procreation, but that is one of the fundamental definitional uh, uh, aspects of it. Uh, of course, there's more to marriage just than that. And you know? what about people that are infertile? They fall in love and they realize that they can have babies. And they don't really necessarily yeah. want and to they, adopt. And Is that okay well, for them to be married? Because then you're, by definition, marriage falls into a completely different thing. Because then it's a bond of love. It's a union of love. So I personally think that this is the core of Joe Rogan's argument for marriage in general. And I mean, it's kind of the core of the reason that I married Spice a lot of the decision when it came to deciding whether or not I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her didn't really have anything to do with us having children together. It was just the fact that I knew I wanted to commit to loving her and just her in a romantic way forever. And that's essentially what Joe Rogan is saying. Marriage is about a bond, unity, becoming one for the sake of love and nothing else. Sure. I mean, that doesn't change the nature of, of marriage, though. It's a, it's a little bit like... Um, I say that, uh, uh, what's the definition of a woman? Well, a woman is someone who by her nature can conceive children in her womb and bear children. And then the response is always, well, what about women who are infertile? Does that, right. does that destroy your definition of woman? And uh, it, it doesn't because you know, it, it's, still, it's still a woman's nature to bear children. Not every woman will, and there will be disease and infertility and, and old age and all these things that will preclude that, but it's still, it's still of her nature to do so. Um, and I would say the same thing for marriage. I mean, it's, it's, it is natural in a marriage for, for procreation to occur. It's not always going to happen in reality, though, but that's still, that's still one of the natural functions of marriage. And, and uh, married couples who can't conceive children. There are other ways to um, be parents, like adoption, for example. If they want to. So what I'm hearing from Matt Walsh is that the nature of marriage, generally speaking, is to procreate. And even if it turns out that you cannot procreate, that doesn't change the institution of marriage, what it was originally intended to do. Now, Joe Rogan's very competent counter argument is that not everybody can have kids. Does that invalidate their marriage? Matt Walsh is saying, well, just because you can't give birth doesn't mean that you can't have and like raise children. And Joe Rogan's argument is if you want to. So we're kind of getting to the bottom of it. So, I think Joe is kind of pressing Matt to kind of admit like, hey, are you saying that marriage isn't legit unless you're trying to raise kids? Right. Sure. But if people want to be married and don't want to ever have children, are you opposed to them being married? Well, I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't advocate a law that would prevent it. But would I, it change the definition of what their marriage is to you because they don't want to have a family? They just want to have a loving bond? I think this would be a, a couple that is rejecting uh, one of the fundamental aspects of marriage, and that they they should be they they should be open to to life. I would hope that in the future they would be, but but isn't that just a personal choice? I mean, you can have a very fulfilling life if you just follow your pursuits and your dreams and your your interests, and you find someone that shares those interests with you, and you share time together. It's very fulfilling yeah, it's and a, loving. Yeah, it's a it's a pers it's a personal choice, and that I'm I'm not advocating for like a law that says that you you if you're married you have to have you have to have X number of kids. So if you were to consider this an argument, I think it's pretty clear that Matt Walsh is losing the argument because he's almost trying to change the conversation. I'm not trying to say that I would advocate for a law saying that if you are going to get married, you need to have children. That's not the conversation that we're having at all. Joe Rogan wants to know if. Matt Walsh personally believes that somebody has a valid marriage if they don't have kids and they never plan on having kids. And that's when we're going to get to the, you know, the gay bit, but we're, we're getting there. But the point is, you can tell Matt Walsh is typically a very confident, well-articulated person, and he still sounds like it, but you can also tell when you start to kind of shift the direction of the conversation to, I'm not saying that we should change a law or anything. Nobody was talking about that. We just want to know how you feel about marriage generally. So whenever we continue the conversation later about who's getting married, then we kind of know what your stance is and how you define it. It's like the same thing Matt Walsh does when he's pressing people to define what a woman is. We just want you to say what marriage is. 
And if your general definition of marriage doesn't mandate children, then you don't really have an argument when we start talking about gay marriage, but we're going to get there. It's pretty good though, right? It's, it's good stuff. It's a good conversation. Um, but then why are you opposed to two gay people doing that? Well, because, because again, it's, it's, it's not about choice. It's about what this institution, marriage is an institution, and what is it, and what purpose does it serve? And I, I, I do not agree with um, tearing down or, or, or changing this definition, especially because the people who have changed the definition haven't come up with a new one. So they, they say, well, that's not what marriage is. So for thousands of years, we said marriage is the procreative union. We? And then we had the other side that came along and said, well, it's not that. Who's the other side? Okay, well, then, like, what is it exactly? And I know you said, well, it's, it's people who love each other. Two people love each other. Well, but then why two people? Why do they have to love each other? Um, you know, all these kinds of questions. That wasn't all these kind of questions. That was like two questions. Why do they have to be people? Why do they have to love each other? I think the definition of marriage from Joe Rogan's perspective is a pretty clear one. It's two people that agree to love each other exclusively, monogamously, in an intimate way, forever. Like, it's not as complicated as Matt Walsh is saying. The other side is saying that it is, you know? You get into, you know, what if they're, they're in the same family? What if brothers and sisters want to marry? And I know every time that comes up, you know, the, the advocates for gay marriage will say, well, that's a slippery slope argument. That's a fallacious. But it's actually not. It's like we're trying to get to what do you even think this institution is now since you've rejected out what we were saying it was. And... Um, and I've never found a, a compelling definition. And just, any, any, def, any definition offered, it's like, it's like well, what are you, what are you, what's even the point then? Why do, why, just, why do we even need this now? I just don't see how a gay marriage in any way damages a straight marriage. Now, to be fair, Mr. Rogan, uh, that's kind of shifting the narrative too, because I don't think Matt Walsh is trying to make the argument that gay marriage is affecting straight marriage. I think he's making the argument that gay marriage is tearing apart the institution of marriage, what it's supposed to be. But we'll, we'll listen to this response. I don't, I don't see it at all. It doesn't make any sense to me. It just seems to me that people want to be... Bu look, if you, if you wanted to look at logic, especially in our modern society, which is pretty fucked when it comes to relationships, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 50% of all marriages end in divorce anyway. Fact check, true. Um, Editor Derek here. I just looked it up and... Those statistics are accurate as of 2019. Check the link in the description. I cite my sources. They don't make it. You know, if well, I don't know if anything would damage marriage and damage the institution of marriage is the option of divorce. I don't think gay people and gay people getting married in any way, shape, or form changes a bond that you have with your wife. It's just called marriage. It's a human invented thing. If we decide that gay people can get married too, I just don't see how it damages anything. I don't think it tears down the definition of marriage in any way. It just opens up the possibility that people who are gay won't be discriminated against. Joe's kind of spitting, bro. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that a, a gay couple existing uh, directly impacts, you know, there's a gay couple and, you know, wherever, and, and I'm with my wife in, in our house. Like, obviously, right. there's not... Um, but I'm talking about. I'm not talking about on the, on the individual level. I'm talking about on, this, on the on the societal level. Right. I would agree that um, divorce, especially uh, you know, uh, this no fault divorce, rampant divorce. I don't think it's as high as fifty percent. I know that that's the that's often quoted. I'm not sure where that comes from, but um, it's a quick Google search. Uh, Joe Rogan is right. I just double checked it. So please make a legitimate counter argument, please, and stop like questioning the fifty percent divorce rate because like it's legit and everybody's known for a while, Matt. But uh. Please, please. Um, it is high. It's like it's too high. And, and Chris I, and, Rock has a great joke about that. He and said it, those are just the people with the courage to get out. <laughs> it's like how many cowards stay. But it's also it's also true that the advocates for what we call now traditional marriage, which I just call marriage, but the advocates for traditional marriage put themselves at a disadvantage by allow, especially in the churches, like allowing this rampant divorce to occur. Um, and then you've you've already sort of given up. On some at marriage is supposed to be monogamous and uh, and permanent, as well as procreative. Well, you've given up monogamy and permanence, and so now it's not that's 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 two of the three legs gone, and so now this assault was waged on the procreative part of it. I just want to stop right there and acknowledge the fact that he describes somebody that wants to get married but doesn't want to have kids. Like he describes that relationship, that couple of those people as assaulting the institution of marriage, the procreation portion 
of marriage. I think that the disconnect here between Matt Walsh and Joe Rogan is that Matt Walsh has a perspective on marriage that's built on Christian faith, and Joe Rogan has a perspective on marriage of um, marriage is a man-made institution. I think that's where the main disconnect here is, but we'll see if more of that comes up. And it was just it was it was difficult to to withstand it because the institution had already been weakened. So I agree with you there. Um, but my answer to that is to try to reinforce what marriage is, not to just give up on it entirely. And I I still think you're left with this question of like if marriage is not what I'm saying it is, then what? Why do we even need it? What's the? I mean, you're saying it's a it's a man made institution. Yes. But you but you're also. It, like the way that you're pre presenting it, it's it's a, it's also it's a totally meaningless institution. It's no, like they don't need it at all. Okay, that's where Matt Walsh completely lost me. So basically, they disagree on what marriage means, and Matt Walsh is saying, so basically, what you're saying is we don't need it at all. If it isn't about bearing children and procreation, then what does it even mean? What's the point of it? And Joe Rogan was not trying to downplay the importance of marriage at all. He's just saying, why can't gay people do it? That's literally always asking. If they are willing to show their commitment, their level of love for each other, and commit in front of an audience with witnesses legally binding, that is important to them. That's meaningful. And Matt Walsh is saying, basically, you're saying it has no meaning. When did he say that? He just didn't say that. Like, if marriage is not what I'm saying it is, then what? why do we even need it? What's the point? I mean, you're saying it's a, it's a man-made institution. Yes. But you're, but you're also, it, like, the way that you're pre presenting it, it's, it's, a, it's also, it's a totally meaningless institution no like they don't need it at all no it's not meaningless it's because it means something to the people that get married exactly so it's just it's just a subjective symbolic thing i mean what yeah so if you're kind of what it is look there's a massive responsibility when you're married and when you have children to keep your family together and you raise and keep everybody happy and healthy and there's great reward to that yeah but it doesn't always work out it's not it's not a it's People change. People are fucked up. It doesn't, it doesn't always work. And so I don't think it should be outlawed because 50% of the people fall apart. Just like I don't think it has any effect whatsoever on a straight couple if a gay couple decides that they want to make it official. And that's what it is to them. It, it gives them a feeling that, that they're accepted and appreciated and that they're not discriminated against because they happen to be homosexual. So, well, what you're articulating to me is the damage that's done. Okay, first of all, dog chill. Like, there's no real world damage being done when two gay people get married. But Joe Rogan is kind of letting himself lose. Like, he's he's letting himself take a step back in the argument. I think that if he wants to make a more compelling argument towards a Matt Walsh, he needs to focus on the legally binding aspects of marriage, the tax benefits, the commitment to monogamy forever the the unity i think that saying things like feelings and you know i mean i understand why he's talking about not being discriminated against but for the sake of making an argument with somebody like matt walsh matt walsh is going to be like oh so you just want to get married because of your feelings and stuff i mean yeah duh that's kind of like the <laughs> the core of marriage like love you have to start with love so, you know, but I, I think that Matt Walsh is going to try and be like, so what you're saying is, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out like what the damage is. Like, I'm excited for him to discuss what the damage of it is, what the damage is doing to the institution. By gay marriage to the institution of marriage. But how is it done? How is that because, in any way damaged straight people? Because we are making the institution meaningless. But it's not meaningless. Well, but it's just very like, meaningful to the people that have it. Subjective, symbolic, and it's about your own personal feelings. Isn't it though? Well, no, I, I would say that it's not. It's, it's, well, if it's not subjective and it's not symbolic, it's, then... it's, it, it, it codifies and protects and uh, gives a name to a, a thing that actually exists, which is which are you know man woman couples creating people creating creating babies. Okay, so he's gone full circle back to the whole marriage is a baby making event, and it's just okay, it is, but it also isn't. People get married and then they don't have babies. People can get married fully intending on having babies and then realize that they can't. And he's saying, oh, well, in that case, you just need to adopt. What? Please tell me in the Bible 
Matt Walsh, please give me a Bible quote about how if you find out that you're infertile, that you are required to adopt. Like, I don't believe you. Also, while we're here... I hate to be that guy that's like Googling definitions, but marriage, quote. The legally or formally recognized union of two people as a partner's in a personal relationship. Historically, and in some jurisdictions, specifically a union between a man and a woman. Initially, it's the union of two people as partners in a personal relationship. Now, if we want to give Matt Walsh some credit here, at the end of the definition, it says it's usually between a man and a woman. Still doesn't mention children. So, like, eh, even if you are right, which I don't think you are, you're really only half right. Marriage, by definition, has nothing to do with kids. It just doesn't. Look it up. Um, but not always. Right, but, again, but that's, still, that's, still the, that's still the nature of the union. So, But what are the percentage of people today that are married that don't have children? I bet it's pretty high amongst heterosexuals. Probably. Is there something wrong with that? I, I think there is something wrong with that. I, I think it, it, there, there is something wrong with you know, getting married and saying, oh, we're, just, we, we don't, we're not going to have any kids at all. But why is there something wrong with that of someone's personal choice? So the conversation has kind of shifted to personal freedoms. And I believe that Matt Walsh could make a good faith argument that it is good for society, for the sustainability of the country, the world, the planet, for people to get married and have children. Joe Rogan's like, well, what if you just don't want to have kids? I mean, that's fine. I mean, the planet's going to die <laughs> if people just stop having kids. But I don't think Matt Walsh is going to make that argument. I think it's going to be like, because that's how what God intended or something like that. Or maybe he's just going to make it like an anti-gay thing. I think the idea that promoting gay marriage will have the indirect consequence of contributing to a world with less heterosexual couples, which would lead to a world with less childbearing which is an argument that could be made, but I don't think it's a good enough argument to keep gay people from getting married. And I know that Matt Walsh isn't saying we should legally stop them from getting married, but I think Matt Walsh is saying, ethically speaking, they shouldn't get married because like, it's not good for the universe if gay people get married or if anybody gets married and decides not to have kids. And, you know, I think I just personally disagree. And I think Joe Rogan personally disagrees. And I think most people listening to this personally disagree that you should be able to get married and just not have kids, gay or not. But let's continue. We're almost done. Well, why would that? Why is it wrong that two people are like, you know, I am deeply committed to work, and I don't want to sacrifice any of my career, and I don't want to ruin a kid because I'm constantly at the office, but that's where I get deep satisfaction, and, and that's, that's what I'm focused on. And the, the woman says, that's great, because I don't want children either. I really am yeah. c attached to my interests and my career and what I like to do. That, that's not damaging your relationship with your wife and your family. And it's I don't certainly I certainly don't think of it as a threat to my marriage or my family. Yeah, it's uh, it is a personal choice, right? But shouldn't but... people be allowed to make those personal choices? Like, isn't that a fundamental aspect of what it means to be American to have that freedom? Well, right, yeah, but right now we're not talking about what people are allowed to do. I'm not saying well, that— Well, we're talking about marriage, gay marriage. Okay, that, we, were, we, were, we were just discussing straight couples who choose straight not couples to have kids. Straight couples choose—that's also a personal freedom issue, right. isn't it? Yeah, but, and I'm not saying that, that straight couples should be legally required to have kids, but I, I, you know, if you're asking me, do I think it's the right choice to just get married and choose not to have kids ever, I, I, I do not think that that's the right choice. It might, it's, their, it's their choice, but people can make choices that are wrong. Boom, okay, so Matt Walsh admits he— concedes actually that people should have the right to make those decisions he just disagrees with it he just personally thinks it's wrong and joe rogan's gonna press him what is wrong about it what's wrong about it um and you can but disagree how is it wrong if they have a fulfilling and wonderful life together with that choice if their their thing is that they just want to have a bond between the two of them to just like take it to the next yep. level, let everybody know, like we are married. If I die, my money's gonna go to Helen. And if Helen dies, you know, I, you know, I'm gonna mourn her because she was my wife and now I'll be a widower. Like to some people, that distinction gives them peace and security and makes them feel better about the relationship. That they're both so committed that they've legally signed documents that say that they're bound by law and under the eyes of God or whatever you believe in. Boom, mic drop. I think Joe Rogan has essentially won the argument there. 
Marriage is supposed to be something that bonds you together by love through unity, legally speaking, forever. I think that Matt Walsh thinks marriage is a special thing that should be reserved for a man and a woman that intend on having children. Joe Rogan's argument that marriage should be reserved for any two loving people that are old enough to consent to it, that are willing to commit to one other person in a monogamous relationship forever. It's unity, it's love, it's commitment, it's legally binding, and they're doing it in the presence of loved ones or witnesses or in a church, in a field, wherever they feel that they can best display or convey what they're committing to. I think that is the main distinction. Matt Walsh seems to think that his marriage is the best marriage. It's better than everyone else's, and I get it. Everybody that has a dog says that my dog is the best in the world. And I'm sure that everybody that's married, at least initially, they're like, oh, this is the best marriage. Matt Walsh is saying, my marriage is better because I have kids, I have a wife, and it's not a gay marriage. And uh, Matt Walsh, maybe Joe Rogan's the first one to break it to you. Your marriage is not any more special than really anybody else's. I think that's it. (laughs) They're they're able to make that choice, but I think you're still rejecting one of the purposes of marriage. And in the scenario that you just outlined, you're also deciding to live a really self-centered life. You're saying- What if you're not? What if your work is very charitable? What if it benefits humanity in a deep way? What if you spend a lot of time doing, you know, healthcare work and, you know, and uh, social work and you're, you're deeply committed to your community? It's not selfish at all. You're just dedicating your time to something I mean, other than raising new human beings. But yeah, that's you're a, dedicating your life to enhancing other human beings that are around you. That's a hypothetical. It I, is a hypothetical, right, but so but, is yours, right? Yeah, but I, I think most of the people that choose, like, we're not going to have kids, and, and the and the the rate of uh, those rates are declining, um, and the age when people first have kids is also going up, and, and all that. And, yeah, and, and I, I, most of the people that are making these choices, I don't, I don't think it's because they're involved in charity work. I, I do think that it is more the the scenario you outlined. In the, in the the first time around, which is just like, well, I, I, this is what I'm doing. For, you know, I have my job. I don't want to give it up. Yeah. Because of, um, but don't you think that people should have the freedom to live their life in that way? I think human beings vary widely in a huge way. And I think there's some human beings that find a very fulfilling life just reading books and traveling and experiencing different things and seeing art and doing whatever the fuck they want to do. And they don't necessarily have to have kids to live a fulfilling life that way. And if they choose to do that with someone who they have a loving bond with and who they get married to, I don't think it's a bad thing that they don't want to have kids. Now we've reached the point in the discussion where Matt Walsh is making the argument that choosing to not have children is just selfish. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I think the idea that we're put on this planet by God or whoever else to have children, it's It's a nice thought. It makes sense. That's how society has survived as long as it has. People have raised children, and some people have raised those children very well, and they contribute to society. My wife spends upwards of 40 hours a week trying to find animals' homes. If she wants to not stop doing that for a single day, for a single minute, and that choice, that personal choice of hers excludes having children she should have the right to do that and that does not invalidate our marriage if i choose to just continue filing claims and making podcasts not only am i helping (laughs) valued (laughs) valued at&t customers make sure they have working devices i'm also providing entertainment and education for the like 20 people that listen to this show and i don't think we should be made to feel bad about that for the record, like the plan is to have kids. But if we decided not to, I'm not trying to hear from Matt Walsh about how my marriage sucks because it doesn't. So shut up. Shut up! Well, I think, I guess we have to, maybe we're running into a, a question of, of, you know, now you get to the real fundamental question. I think it's like, a what? fundamental freedom thing. Yeah, it, 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 we're not disagreeing, I guess, on the freedom aspect of it because, again, I'm not saying that you should be required to have kids. But so, you're imposing your sensibilities 
and what you think is important in life to other people. But everybody has a different idea of what's I'm important not, in I'm life not. without hurting anyone. The thing is, like, my, what I'm saying is these people that are, that are married, that don't have children, they're not harming anyone. They're not harming these unborn children that they never have. They're not harming anyone. And it doesn't affect your relationship with your family and your marriage at all. Yeah, but and I'm also it, not, I'm not imposing myself on them or in, in harming them by answering a question about, about right. how I feel about their choices. Right, but nor are gay people doing that to you. I if, think the, I, the harm comes from, on a societal level, when we start breaking down these basic uh, central institutions, like the, the institution of the, of the family and of marriage, that's where the harm, harm comes from. And the, the more that people believe, the more that we build a society where it's believed that marriage is objectively meaningless, Right, it's it's entirely subjective. It's just about it's just about making you feel better. It's a little condescending, dude. Um, Matt Walsh is basically at the point where it's very clear that he's lost the argument, and he's just like, okay, clearly we're disagreeing. We're not going to reach common ground. That's fine. My point is that if you don't believe marriage is about family, then your marriage is meaningless to me, and um, I just think that's fucking whack. <laughs> I just think it's fully wrong. Um, marriage is about family in a sense because. When Spice and I got married, our families join together. And the idea, the idea from many even in our family may be that we are going to have children and continue, you know, the back Buxton bloodline. You know what I mean? But if we choose not to, or if it turns out that she can't, or I can't, or whatever happens, that does not make our marriage meaningless. You bozo. Um. The more that we build a society like that, I think the, that's where the harm comes in, the, wor the worse it is. And people are going to reject marriage, um, and, uh, and that means more, you know, fewer kids are being born. Also, more kids are being born in a context where they don't have that stable family structure. So the harm definitely comes. It may not be this immediate, you know, connect the dots thing, but uh, and, and we can already see that. So that is essentially the end of the clip that was shared to Joe Rogan's YouTube channel with their discussion on gay marriage. Um, let me know what you guys think of these types of therapy episodes where I take a clip or a conversation like that and I kind of break it down and then give my opinion on it. For the record, like I have a great deal of respect for Joe Rogan generally, of course. And uh, even Matt Walsh, even though I think he was on the bad end of that argument, even though I think he was on the losing end of that argument, when I say things like, you know, oh, he's being silly, he's being a bozo, whatever, it's just because I feel like what he's saying is is actually kind of insulting. Um, I'm not gay, but if I was, I would be insulted by, you know, the narrative that he is pushing that it's not a legitimate ver marriage, it's not a valid marriage because it's not between a man and a woman or somebody isn't capable of bearing children or they don't want to or they aren't willing to adopt. And I just got married and it was very, <laughs> if you were there, you know how serious it was. People are crying. People are witnessing the fact that I'm committing to something legally and lawfully and seriously forever. And the idea that there are people like Matt Walsh, um, if that is like a broader opinion in conservative circles, that marriage is essentially meaningless. I'm not making that up. Those are his words. It's like if you don't, he's like, if my definition of marriage is about family and a mother and a father and having and raising children, um, you're basically saying that if you don't agree with that, you're saying marriage is meaningless. And I think that's... That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just I mean, gay or not, I just think it's I think it's wrong. And I love the fact, I do respect the fact, however, that Matt Walsh was willing to come on a show like Joe Rogan's, a platform like that, and be willing to kind of, like, not... I'm not saying made a fool out of, because he doesn't sound dumb. Like, he doesn't sound like an idiot. I think his argument's just bad. And I just think he's wrong. But I love the fact that we were able to hear a conversation like that between two grown men that clearly disagree strongly, but it was done in a very respectful way. There was no shouting. There wasn't like a bunch of swearing. It was just kind of, it was very civil. It was very cordial. And I hope that through my editing and through my commentary, even though it's very clear which side I lean, I hope that, you know, I think, I hope I presented it in a way that was easy to consume and you all took something from it so yeah this has been really it's like kind of more of a low-key episode but i really enjoyed it and i hope you did too 
Love You Mean It, New Therapy on Monday, enjoy the outro. Haters looking at me crazy. Cause I'm driving around Miss Daisy And in college I was lazy You've been very defensive lately But they were coming for my baby Well the podcast looking tasty And we getting money lately Sorry I just found my passion man What's happening I've been going up They have been throwing up Once they see the numbers blowing, blowing up. up I've been showing up Like Monday, Monday Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday My way Not the Burger King But y'all a side plate Looking at me sideways Y'all can hit the highway Spotify and Apple hear me Anywhere in the tri-state I am like a fly plate I will never die, man. They say I'm just rambling, but I'm just playing my strength. Oh, Lord. Rapping to me so elementary. I'm going harder than sedimentary. I'm doing this because it was meant to be. I'm not petty, but someone tempted me. Might clap back if someone sent for me. I'd do this without a dollar or cent for me. I won't stop and I don't bend the knee.